Sixth grade, module four, lesson seven, classwork. Replacing letters with numbers. Example one. So we have a square here, and it looks like it's broken up into three by three uh, units. So it wants to know what's the length of one side of this square. So I would say the length of one side, I'll do the length here, is three units. I'm just writing units because they didn't give us inches, feet, yards, centimeters, whatever. So I'm just going to say units. What is the formula for the area of a square? So if we want to define the area of a square formula, what we do is we take one side and multiply by the other, right? So to find area, we do... Let me try that again. So to find area, we know that's length times width. But for a square, a, it has the same length and the same width. So we can just say, we can just call it a side, the side times the side. But if we want to simplify that, we can make it even simpler and say the side squared. What is the square's area as a multiplication expression? So if we wanted to write it write this square's area as a multiplication expression, we would write three units times three units. What is the square's area? So what is it actually equal to? Well, what's three times three? It would be nine, but we need to put our unit on it. So we could write units squared, or you could write nine square units. I mean the same thing. We can count the units, however, look at this other square. Its side length is 23 centimeters. That is just too many tiny units to draw. What expression can we build to find this square's area? So instead of drawing what they're saying, 23 tiny little lines, like, I mean, it'd be very difficult, and then doing it the other way, and then counting them all, that would take we would have to draw a bigger square and it would just take a really long time. So what can we do instead of doing that? What expression can we build? Well, we know that the uh, formula for area is the sides squared. So we can do 23 to the second power, 23 squared. Or we could say 23 centimeters times 23 centimeters. And let's do 23 times 23. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, add those together, and we get 529 centimeters squared, or you could write square centimeters. Exercise 1. Complete the table for both squares. Note these drawings are not to scale. So we're going to take this first one where a side length is equal to four. One, two, three, four. So the length of one side of the square is four. It doesn't tell us what unit it is, so we're just gonna call it units, four units. Squares area written in an expression. So to find the area, we would do four units times four units. And then squares area written as a number, so 4 times 4 is 16 units squared. Then the other one, it tells us the side is 25 inches. So one side is 25 inches. So to find the area, we would do 25 inches times 25 inches. And 25 times 25 is equal to 625 square inches. Remember, it's important to put the label there. So we know that we're talking about area. Example two, what does the letter B represent in this blue triangle? So we're looking for um, what B is equal to. And so I notice right across the way here, this side says that that's eight centimeters long. And since they're both talking about the height, I'm gonna say that B is equal to eight 
you can write eight centimeters or eight. With a partner, answer the following question. Given that the second rectangle is divided into four equal parts, so the second one has, it's divided into four equal parts, what number does the X represent? So it wants to know what this represents. If we know that one part is equal to four centimeters, then X, which is two parts, would be equal to four centimeters times two, or eight centimeters. So X would be eight centimeters. How did you arrive at this answer? Well, we kind of already explained that, but we know that one part was equal to four, and x was equal to two parts, or four times two, which is equal to eight. What is the total length of the second rectangle? So we want to know the total length of this rectangle. So if that's four, then this is four, this is four, this is four. So the total length, four times four, is 16 centimeters. Well, sorry, it's equal to, we only want one four centimeters times four, not times four centimeters because we're multiplying it by the four parts. So it's equal to 16 centimeters. If the two large rectangles have equal lengths and widths, find the area of each rectangle. So they have equal lengths and widths. We know that the width there is 8, this would be 16, so we want to know what 8 by 16 is. 6 times 8 is 48, carry the 4, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12, so we have 128 centimeters squared. So the area of each rectangle will be 128 centimeters squared. Discuss with your partner how the formula for the area of squares and rectangles can be used to evaluate area for a particular figure. So basically you just do length times width, which is the same formula for rectangles and squares, but squares can be simplified to just the side squared. Exercise 2. Complete the table below for both rectangles. Note these drawings are not to scale. Using a calculator is okay. So the first one, we have one, let's see, one, two, three, four units by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's four by seven. So the length here is seven units. I'm using units because they didn't give us a unit and the width is four units. So the area would be seven units times four units which would be equal to 28 units squared. And then the second one, the length, they've given us the length, we don't have to count it, is 46 meters. The width is 32 meters. So 46 times 30, uh, let's put the label on there. 46 meters times 32 meters. And I don't need a calculator. We can do this. 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Put the 0 down. Erase that. Done with the 2, on to the 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Add them together. We get 1,472. And it's going to be meters squared. Example 3. What does L represent in the first diagram? So in the first diagram, the L represents the length of this is a rectangular prism. So it's 
the length of the rectangular prism. What does the W represent in the first diagram? So the W here represents the width And what does the height h represent? It represents the height. Since we know the formula to find volume equal is volume equals length times width times height, what number can we substitute for the l in the formula? Y. So we're going to be using this to represent the length, the width, and the height. So we're going to say these two rectangular prisms are the exact same size. So if we wanted to know the length right here, we would say that the length is 6 centimeters. I'm going to say 6 because... the length of the second prism is 6 centimeters. What other number can we substitute for the L? So there's really no other number we can substitute for the L. The only information we have is that it's 6 centimeters. So. Um, I'm just going to say there is no other number. So no number can replace L except 6. Only one number can replace each letter. What number can we substitute for the W? So let's find the width. So the width is this part right here, and that is 2 centimeters. And why? Um, let's just say because the width of the second prism is two centimeters. And then last question here, what number can we substitute for the H? So here's the H, that is eight centimeters. So eight because the height of the second prism is 8 centimeters. Determine the volume of the second right rectangular prism by replacing the letters in the formula with their appropriate numbers. So remember volume equals length times width times height. So if we want to find the volume, our length times width times height would be 6 times 2 times 8. 6 times 2 is 12 and 12 times 8 would be 96. So we get, we can even put our labels there, 6 centimeters times 2 centimeters times 8 centimeters is equal to 96, and notice there's 3, so centimeters cubed. Complete the table for both figures. Using a calculator is appropriate. Okay, so length of the first one. The length is 12 units, the width is 5 units, and the height is 15 units. So rectangular prism's volume written as an expression. So we have 12 units, I'm going to run out of room, times 5 units, 
times 15 units and the volume written as a number so 12 times 5 is 60 so let's do 60 times 15 I get 900 so we get 900 units cubed and then the last one the length is 23 centimeters the width is 4 centimeters and the height is 7 centimeters so written as an expression we have 23 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 7 centimeters and if we want to know the volume I'm going to first do 4 times 7 because I know that's 28 so I just need to do 23 times 28 3 times 8 is 24 carry the 2 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2 is 18 put the 0 down let me erase that 2 times 3 is 6 2 times 2 is 4 add it up 8 plus 6 is 14 so we get 644 and our unit was centimeters cubed and that's the end of lesson 7